The Jeep Wrangler has been an off-road icon for many decades, and for good reason. It has a well-deserved legacy that dates back to World War II, and it has been an incredibly capable off-roader ever since. However, perhaps due to the financial woes of the Stellantis, some things are going terribly wrong, with their recall after recall being issued. So join us as we take a deeper dive into finding out why the Jeep Wrangler has a huge problem. Number 6. Bringing the Heat Literally If you haven't heard, Jeep Wranglers have been quite a hot topic, some pun intended, in the news lately, but not for a good reason. Jeep was forced to recall a good number of Wranglers because of an incredibly dangerous fire hazard risk. Now, to be clear, this is a separate recall from the issue that affected the 4XE Wranglers in Cherokees. For those not aware, a couple of months ago, Jeep issued a warning to drivers of affected vehicles regarding a safety concern that may pose a fire risk. Until repairs can be completed, Jeep advised owners to park their vehicles outdoors and away from structures. Additionally, the automaker recommends refraining from charging the vehicles to prevent potential fire hazards that could cause property damage. Jeep was just reeling in from the 4XE recall, but they got hit with another federal investigation, as the non-4XE Wranglers and Gladiators have also been victims of unexplained underhood fires. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has launched a federal investigation into more than 781,000 Jeep Wranglers and Gladiators from model years 2021 to 2023 due to reports of underhood fires. The agency has documented nine confirmed fire incidents, one injury, and one fatality, potentially linked to these engine fires. According to NHTSA's preliminary findings, the suspected source of these blazes is a power steering pump electrical connector, with most fires localized in the passenger side engine bay. Alarmingly, the fires can ignite even when the vehicle's ignition is turned off. These incidents are not limited to high-stress off-road use. Some fires occurred shortly after the vehicles were purchased, with one Jeep Wrangler catching fire just 10 minutes after leaving the dealership and another Gladiator sparking after being parked for two weeks. Of course, all of this isn't great news for Mopar fans. For the 4XE owners, the problem seems to be resolved after Jeep dealers performed a free-of-charge software upgrade after the recall. But whether or not we will see the same treatment for the non-hybrid models is still a mystery. But a fire hazard risk that affects Jeep's bread-and-butter models like the Cherokee, Wrangler, and Gladiator is certainly not good news and will only worsen the already bad financial woes of the company. Number 5. Infamous Death Wobble is Still Not Fixed Every Jeep owner has heard about the famous or infamous death wobble that affects even stock Jeeps. While Jeep owners may have popularized the term death wobble, this unsettling phenomenon can affect any vehicle with a solid front axle. Solid axles inherently struggle to absorb shocks from road bumps smoothly, making any suspension or steering issues more pronounced and noticeable. The death wobble typically occurs when the vehicle hits a bump or pothole at speed, causing violent and uncontrollable steering vibrations. The root cause is often tied to loose, worn, or damaged components in the front suspension or steering system. Culprits can include failing ball joints, worn tie rod ends, unbalanced tires, or issues with the track bar or bushings. Now, NHTSA has forced Jeep to do a recall because of the death wobble in the past but the issue is still persistent. FCA acknowledged the death wobble issue in the older Jeep Wranglers and attempted to address it through multiple service bulletins and a recall. Their proposed remedy involved installing a new steering damper, which was supposed to absorb vibrations and prevent violent shaking associated with the death wobble. However, many customers reported that this fix fell short of solving the problem. Those who had the steering dampers replaced often found the issue recurring within months. This has led to frustration among Jeep owners, some of whom feel that FCA failed to address the root causes of the issue, such as underlying suspension and steering geometry flaws or component wear and tear. The fact that Jeep still hasn't resolved this issue after all these years shows that there is a significant problem in Jeep regarding quality and reliability. So if you're looking for a Wrangler, make sure you set aside some money for fixing this issue using aftermarket parts. Number 4 not-so-great ride quality on the road. 
While the Jeep Wrangler excels as an off-road vehicle, its performance on paved roads leaves much to be desired, especially when compared to modern competitors. The introduction of the four-door Wrangler Unlimited was a clear attempt to broaden its appeal to families and daily commuters. However, its traditional design features, which are vital for off-road excellence, also result in several on-road compromises. The Wrangler's high ground clearance and large all-terrain tires make it a beast on rugged trails, but contribute to a bouncy, unsettled ride on highways. The iconic boxy design and poor insulation amplify wind and road noise, making long drives less comfortable. The solid axles used in both the front and rear are a time-tested setup for durability and articulation on the trail, but lead to less precise handling and more body roll on pavement. Brands like Ford, Toyota, and Land Rover have embraced independent suspension systems in models like the Ford Bronco and Toyota 4Runner. These designs strike a more modern balance, maintaining off-road capabilities while offering superior on-road comfort and stability. The shift highlights the Ringler's adherence to its off-road legacy, which may no longer meet the expectations of those who use it as an everyday driver. For Jeep loyalists, these trade-offs might be worth the unmatched off-road prowess. However, for those prioritizing a smoother on-road experience, the alternatives are increasingly attractive. Number 3. Lackluster Build Quality Again, Wrangler is not the best when it comes to on-road or regular day-to-day -day driving because of its poor build quality. The Wrangler's boxy non-aerodynamic design, while iconic for its rugged off-road appeal, leads to significant highway wind noise. At higher speeds, the sound can become overwhelming, often making it difficult for passengers to have a conversation or enjoy audio. This is a common complaint among owners, particularly those who use the Wrangler for long highway drives. As an off-road vehicle, the Wrangler is designed to endure tough conditions, but it doesn't always fare well in real-world rugged use. These issues contribute to the Wrangler's inconsistent reputation as an all-terrain vehicle. While it's undoubtedly one of the best options for off-road adventurers, its build quality struggles in challenging environments like deep water crossings and extended high-speed driving, where wind noise and electrical failures can detract from the driving experience. Number 2. Not Very Practical Jeep Wrangler is certainly very capable off the beaten path. However, it's not exactly practical. One of the most significant drawbacks of the Jeep Wrangler, especially when compared to other vehicles in its class, is its limited cargo space. This issue is particularly pronounced in the two-door version, though our four-door model offers more room. The two-door Wrangler offers 13 cubic feet of cargo space with the rear seats up and 47 cubic feet when the rear seats are down. The four-door version of the Wrangler is certainly better than the two-door variant, as it offers a little less than 32 cubic feet with the rear seats up and a bit over 72 cubic feet when the rear seats are folded down. For those who need more cargo capacity, the four-door Wrangler is the clear choice. It provides significantly more space than the two-door version, especially when the rear seats are folded down, making it more suitable for families or adventurers who need to haul larger gear. However, even the four-door model's cargo space is still limited compared to rivals in the midsize SUV and off-road vehicle segments, such as the Toyota 4Runner or Ford Bronco. If cargo capacity is a top priority, potential buyers may want to explore these alternatives, or even consider a different Jeep model, like the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which offers more room while still delivering solid off-road performance. Number 1. A bit on the expensive side, is it not? The Jeep Wrangler, a symbol of rugged off-road capability, comes with a premium price tag and a reputation for inconsistent reliability. Let's take a closer look at the pricing of the Jeep Wrangler. The base model Wrangler Sport starts at $32,690, which is already on the high side for an entry-level off-road vehicle. Also, keep in mind that the base model will not be coming with a rear or front locking differential for tackling more technical trails. Another thing to keep in mind is that the base model comes with a manual transmission as standard, and the 8-speed automatic transmission is a $2,500 option, which might be a little bit off-putting for some customers. If you want an actual off-roader that will be able to conquer all the trails that can throw your way, you're going to have to look at some higher trims, like the Rubicon or Rubicon X. The four-door Rubicon, which is priced at $52,050, which still commands a significant investment from you. For V8 enthusiasts, the Rubicon 392 is available for another year, so the fans can rejoice. 
the 392 Wrangler is set to have a whopping price tag of over $100,000. For some people, this is well worth the money, as it is supposedly the last chance to buy a V8 Wrangler. However, it doesn't make it any less expensive.